Yeah, we're being uh, 6 o'clock p.m. Call the meeting to order and uh, welcome everyone to this evening's uh, Zoning Board of Adjustment Hearing, the 14th of September, 2015. Our first case this evening is uh, case number case number 15-12 for a variance application pursuant to zoning article Roman numeral seven to allow for the construction of a storage shed which would encroach upon the front side back setback sorry at Caleb Hill Road between number 55 and number 75 Caleb Hill Road in the Rural Agricultural District District from map R14 to 13-1 and uh, the applicants are the applicants are familiar to everyone on the board students Clark um, I have to resolve an issue before we get started dealing with uh, the number of ZBA members we have present which is as you can see four the missing one tonight and uh, by law uh, it, it requires at least three votes uh, three three votes in the affirmative to accept uh, an application um, and so it behooves me to ask you what if you want to continue with that. We do. Very well. Do you want to continue until next month? Or do you want after hearing you? No, I may continue tonight. But or oh, you, okay. you can okay. or you can continue until next month. Thank you. Okay. That's true. Either That's way you can postpone. <laughs> Would you rather continue tonight or postpone? Continue tonight. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Are there any disqualifications? Okay, let's go ahead and have a look at this thing. Did you want to uh, say anything special uh, in addition to what's here? So we did most of the research on it, so I'll go ahead. Well, it's pretty self-explanatory. It is. Um, the ground, the land drops off very steeply. Yeah. Probably maybe about <coughs> 35 or 40 feet back to the road. So if we come forward 15 feet, we can put the shed in there without uh, moving earth. I mean, moving a lot of it. You're still going to be okay with drainage there too, coming down from the building? Uh, I don't think it will affect the drainage very much. No, I mean, just into your build, new building. Oh, no. The spot where it's where it will be will be double. Okay. They're going to level just that off. Yeah. And then uh, wherever it goes down, they'll. You're going to take fill? Yeah, it will have to be filled a little bit because the ground starts to drop gradually and then it just drops right off. So we'll have to fill here at the top of the hill. Where we intend to About three it. feet. Close by. So there's no way to put this shed in and around the, the house itself on that lot? Well, it, there's really not enough space. We have power lines and there's a you move equipment up and down the hill there because we're on a hill so there are areas where you can drive down the hill and the areas where you can. So um, there's not enough space behind the house itself without infringing on where we drive in front of the house to get to the front of the house or we drive down behind the house, down that steep hill that way. Yeah. It's really no, and we have a bunch of blueberries there that I would hate to move. They've been there about 20 years. I may only get a lot of blueberries. Yeah. <laughs> and actually it wouldn't fit on that spot. I don't know the answer to what I'm going to ask you, but I just said a suggestion, not a suggestion, advising you, if you will. And once you put a structure, and that's a separate lot, right? Yeah. Once you put a structure on it, it could alter the taxation of the lot. Certainly. Yeah. You know that? Yeah, for that area. Yeah. For that lot. Yeah. Well, right now it's an empty lot. <clears throat> and uh, you're putting a structure on it. So you might want to check into that, see what it's going to do to that. Yeah. From that angle, assuming that you know it, it proved it this evening. Just want to look into it, see how it will affect. Yes, 
just looks like you're building like another size garage. 12 by 20. 30, no, it's 30 by 30, 30, 30 by 20 or 21 by 31 in the other. It's 20 by 31. Pretty large. 20 by 31. Why Actually, that? it's 30 by 20. I'm not thinking it's small. Well, I've got a size of TNT. I thought it was 20 to 31. You see them over at Bouchain's Auto? Over Bobby Boucher. I went over there in Boone's yeah. Age. Right by Robert's yeah. store there in Robert's Market, right on the corner when you turn to go to Andover. There's a there's a metal shed right there that's like 12 by 18, but it's it's uh, that style. The metal shed? It's a metal up. shed. It's going to have two sides covered and the roof covered, both ends open. Mm -hmm. So to shield everything in there, it'll protect everything, but also make it tidy it up. It's really a mess out there right now. Yeah, if anyone's interested, I took pictures of the junkyard in our backyard. <laughs> <laughs> if you'd like to see what's there now. I think we have three boat trailers, one of which has a boat on it, a camper, a canoe, three kayaks, a snow blower, two utility trailers, and a wood splitter. <laughs> All of it various how close will the, uh, will the west side of that shed be to the actual edge of the road? 25 feet. Well, that's what I'm requesting in this variance. So it's just 15 feet relief. So you're, you're getting into it by 10 feet? 10 feet 15 into feet, that? 15 feet. The setback is 40. We're asking for 25. Yeah, yes, so 15 feet into it. Sullivan's house across the street is about 15 feet. I mean, that, that was built a long time ago, but that's that's really close, a lot closer. The old farmhouse there, you mean? The farmhouse okay. there. That doesn't count. I know, I mean, but it, but it, 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 <coughs> it, it deals with the, you know, the change in the character of the road. It doesn't affect the character. You're not going to be accessing this from the road? Yes, road. we do have a state permit for the driveway. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, you do? Yes. Okay. Did, uh, did in your, with your state approval did it specify what the uh, right of way was from the center line for Caleb Road there? Um, the, what? That the, the state lease claimed to as far as an easement? You know, every road in town has a State I don't know if I, I talked to Bill over that. It was Bill that I talked to over there. I was one that handled that. I don't remember. Um, I know we measured the 25 feet from the center of the stone wall, the original stone wall. There's a there's a, a survey marker there when it's subdivided the property, and that's that's where you start measuring back. Well, as long as you discussed with them already that if there was a problem with their easement, that would come come to light at that point. Then. Right. Yeah. He, he, we did have that discussion. There's no, you know, they're going to do their reconstruction. There's no problem in terms of affecting anything that the DOT wants to do. I didn't think it would be a problem. But I cannot imagine my lifetime <laughs> altering the way that came to the road. Then. No. <clears throat> like then or mine. Mm -hmm. Or mine. Oh, well, okay. Well, there's no one here for me to uh, address to for any positive or negative sentiment. No letters were written? The way the shed runs, the open ends are going to be so north and south. North and south. So, south they will, yeah. so the side will be facing the road. road. Okay. Which will, which will block the view of anything that's right. yeah. And then we have access to it through both ends. You're going to put a pavement? Pay gravel? No, just gravel. Uh, just gravel. gravel. Yeah. Okay. I, I also, uh, we've talked to several of the neighbors, you know, you know about <coughs> it, you know, they got letters, I guess. And, and uh, I got no negative feedback from them. But Tom Daniels. You folks didn't have any input, did you, on this? All right. All right. 
Has everyone had a chance to look over the five tests for the variance on this application? Yes, not today. Yeah. You probably should have them read them anyway. Oh, you can read them. Just for the record. Yeah, they're fairly short. Have you got a copy in here? Would you like to read those to us? Hi. Uh, yes. Uh, well, if I'm reading it correctly, the interest, number one, granting variance would not be contrary to the public interest because it would not adversely <coughs> affect the character of the road. It would be 10 foot further uh, from the road than the house across the street. Number two, the variant, if the variance were granted, the spirit of the ordinance would be observed because it would allow applicant to utilize property for intended use without affecting the character of the road. Number three, granting of the variance would do substantial justice because, because the steep slope of the land about 40 feet from the road, it does not allow reasonable use of the property. The granting of the variance would without violating the spirit of the ordinance. Number four, the variance, if the variance were granted, the values uh, of the surrounding property would not be diminished. The equipment shed would house both trailers, etc. I'm currently spread around the yard covered with tarps. And as my wife says, it looked like a junkyard. <laughs> the equipment shed would provide a place to be stored neatly under cover. This will improve the looks of the neighborhood, consequently increasing property, you know, like neighborhood property. Uh, I, I mean, that may be stretched, but yeah, it will tie things up. Yeah. <laughs> it will tie things up. <laughs> Number five, um, uh, under A, uh, section I, no fair and substantial relationship exists between the, the general public purpose of the ordinance provision and the specific application of that provision to be uh, the property because it will not interfere with the maintenance of the reconstruction of the right of way in Caleb Hill World. That was the conversation with DOT. The proposed use of reasonable one because it allows the applicant to use the property to its reasonable extent without infringing on the reconstruction and character of the road. And under B, explain how the criteria is subparagraph A are not established and unnecessary hardship will be deemed to exist and only if owing to the special conditions of the property that distinct that distinguish it from the other properties in the area. The property cannot be reasonably used in strict conformance with the ordinance and with and the variance is therefore necessary to enable reasonable use of it. Due to the dramatic relief of the topography, it requires the proposed structure to have a reduced front front setback setback. It's still in a reasonable fashion. That's that's it, Bob. Thank you. Thanks very much. Any comments? Do they have a problem with this? No, I mean, some of them are kind of a stretch, but, yeah. you know, but I, I can't get over the, the fact that we're talking about agricultural area and this kind of stuff in an agricultural area just it's kind of necessary at times. Yeah. Considerable problems or costs just for the purpose of a, a shed. You want to talk about home? Uh, we, we also own tractors like neighbors do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We own tractors now, too. Oh. All that stuff needs to be put under cover. Uh, yes, yes, it does. <laughs> Woods trailers, all the rest. Yeah, it's, it seems like a reasonable use to me. I mean, it's, uh, who knows if it, how long it'll be there, anyways, but uh, without getting into a massive regrading of the area, it's, uh, it's probably. Reasonable use for that one section that is fairly level. The only, <clears throat> the only concern, if I may, that I thought of it, I just remember now, is uh, up to this, we didn't know how you, what you, what you were going to make the building, what kind of construction. Because you're telling Columbia it's going to be a metal building. Right. Okay, so I mean, if I would just do one thing as far as if, if we go for it, to uh, have a condition on it that the variance might approve a shed, but not the uh, potential conversion into a livable occupancy. Oh, no problem yeah. there. Unless <laughs> well, you know, I'm going to live there. 
Vacation you know, you know, overnight for him would be okay, though. <laughs> well, once you got the variance, the variance doesn't address the, how you were built to build the building. So somebody could come in after the fact and yeah. say, well, you already got the variance for a 30 by 21. Now, that other small house, yeah. two doors down from you, coming closer to uh, Clark, uh, right on the last of the small houses there. Yeah. There was really nothing oh, more than a garage that was converted yeah. 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 to a house. But that yeah. had to go before the planning board to be able to do that, too, I believe. Uh, that was that was amazing. I'm fine with you putting that as a condition. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that would be the only thing I'd yeah. be concerned with it, that somebody might think that they wouldn't have a home that right. close, and that wouldn't be the intention here, strictly yeah. for the purpose of right. a shed or a barn, a small barn. Right. I'd consider it in a shed. Not a problem. That's, yes, a, good, that's a good yeah. condition, too. Mm -hmm. I just, I just from working out here for many years, I just throw these kind of things come up. And you'd end up getting into the yeah. testing contest with people yeah. relative to what they can do because the variance already exists. Right, I get uh, it. The variance can specify how it would be spelled by can I put a home there on that same that same location. And I don't think that's the intent. Right. So, and I certainly want you to have a place to put your, your junk into. Just out of curiosity, if we did decide to put a home there. When we came back for another variance, is there any reason why it wouldn't be approved also? Oh, yeah, not living in that metal shed doing a real... No, 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 but we're looking at the land thinking, wow, we're thinking about downsizing, building a small little ranch. And I thought, you know, we could put a house up here, too. There's, there's a, it's long enough, it's just shallow because of the steep bank. It's a pretty big it's, lot, though, right? Oh, it's 20 acres or something. Yeah, okay. 25 acres for that lot, but to get down to the back, we looked at it. You need you need to get a building permit. You need to have a, um, a 13 degree scope. I think it's a minimum or something like that. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it's a maximum pitch that you could have. And we we would have more like an eight or nine degree scope. So even putting a road down there would not be it'd be too steep to put a to get a building permit down below. The house just up above you there, extremely steep driveway. The one that goes down into the woods and back around and back up again? Oh, right, Eddie Falona. Yeah, the fog down. That's a lot worse. Yeah, than that's, that's, yeah. and I don't know, you know, that goes down gradually and it drops down all, real steep at the beginning, I think, and then goes gradually. And I don't know if the zoning changed yeah, I don't after think we put that house in. I don't think there's a maximum grade when, when he had to pull up for that house. That's a pretty new provision, isn't it? For what? For driveway. I don't know that there is a I maximum there, grade for a driveway. Yeah. Why would there be a maximum grade for a driveway? Well, you can't have a 45 degree driveway. If you want them, if you oh, get a building for you have got a half track right. right. yeah. go up and down in the winter time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Captain Dawson mentioned that to us a long time ago. Will there be any uh, utilities at all in that? Or was it like no, not, fire not that we're planning. Had issues with it. Great to get to the I, if we store the tractor out there, Bob, we may we may want to run electrical out there to, to, to put a charge on the battery. Yeah, I understand. Triple charge, you know, that kind of thing. Sure. But I... Right. Okay. Uh, Mr. Okay. Um, just to remind you about the, uh, the DOT letter that just came in today. Um, That's for the next case. Uh, no, uh, letter, Peggy. Uh, a letter on each case. Oh. It's the I same didn't realize we had one on this. Ah, to say the same thing, it's just a. Is that Bill? Is that the guy that's being there? Or? Mm -hmm. Let me take this opportunity and then read it into the record. Okay, okay this is dated September 15, 2015, uh, from the Department of Transportation, on the desk of William Cass, PE, Assistant Commissioner, addressed to the Tilton Zone Board of adjust Adjustment regarding uh, tax map R14 lot 13 1. Variance Patrick and Susan Clark between 55 and 75 Capitol Road. Dear board members, the New Hampshire Department of Transportation is responding to the abutter notice in the above referenced project. Are there abutter notices? Hmm? Where? 
Oh, yeah. Okay. Where? Where is the DRT property? The road. The road? The road? The road? Yeah. road he comes in and fire? They've, um, yeah, they, they, they're, they say that they should, they in contact with them, they've requested to be notified as a butter on all. Okay. Um, okay, that's clarified. The New Hampshire Department of Transportation remains neutral toward the application. For the above referenced property, provided there is no increase in water runoff flowing into the department's right of way. Provided there is no alteration or construction within the department's 25 foot, 25 feet from center line of highway, right of way, and provided that if, if necessary, any driveway or excavation permit is obtained from the department, sincerely, William Rogers, PD. Thank you. I, I didn't realize we had two letters. Did I see that? Did I make a reference to the RSA? He may not even look that up particularly because we do have a permit from him that I can drop by and get it every year. Oh, no, you're talking about a curb cut. I know I'm talking about a driveway. That's a, that's a curb cut. Oh, is that what they call it? Yeah. Uh, no, I, that's not where I'm going with this whole thing. I'm just surprised to hear this other thing about it. Yeah, I never heard of that either. A DOT or, yeah. or I guess it would be the town too is now going to be considered in a butter? Well, the town doesn't own the road yet. No, in the town roads. Right. I've never heard of something like this all the, you know, 13 years I worked in there. And that was never considered. We applied for a subdivision yeah, maybe is. five years ago, or whatever it was, and the state wasn't in a butter at that time. Yeah. I, Are they saying it's a matter of the RSA? Um. I don't think that was mentioned in our conversation. Um, I mean, I think by the definition of a butter, um, you know, it's, it's, it's land that's touching, um, it's land that's touching the parcel. Um, they're either an easement holder or an owner of, of, of that land. Later. I just I can't believe that. I'd like to see yeah, that. some kind of a authorization to, to require that because I mean that that seems almost absurd and everybody has to notify the DOT as in a butter. What about the people across the street? That, that then if the, if the state is in a butter, then the people across the street are not in a butter. Uh, no, because state uh, the state statute says that people across the street are a butters. Right. But not that they're not. So people touch. Um, People touching the property are abutters, so that I guess is where DOT says they, they come in, and people across the street are abutters, so they're, they're both are abutters. And it's got to it's got to be more in writing relative to that. That just sounds like somebody's trying to grab authority somewhere to, to require something that uh, there really isn't anything behind it. But this has nothing to do with your case, I really mm -hmm. don't mean it But I will look into that further, just out of curiosity. They did come up and look at the site for safety purposes like they normally do, and it was fine. You know, they looked. Right, well, they couldn't turn you down anyway. It's a separate one. <coughs> um, they can't, I can't refuse your curb cut. Really? No. Boy, look at the one right next to me. The, uh, you know, where my house is, the next oh, house, yeah. just, east, just west of me. Yeah. Okay. He's got a lower lot. That's actually two lots next to me. One has the house on it, the other lower one goes down into the power lines. Yeah. They went for a curb cut and they got one in the lower lot. Wow. And we said, wow, wow there's no right. visibility there. Yeah, wow. So, what do they do? Close your eyes? Uh, we don't Step know. Step on it. <laughs> but we just, well, whatever. Okay. Anyway, Sidetracked here. Um, so on this, uh, yeah, let's get back on the course. Yes, again. you're right. Sure. Um, the condition that you were talking about earlier could be just a one-liner. Approval limited to the construction of storage shed only. Does it have to you know, go into the exemption of housing? No, I'm just or anything for else. The, uh, structure for the purpose of the you see anything wrong with that? storage of uh, vehicles and equipment. Does that work for you guys? Yes. All I can think of is the ones that have. Excuse me, I have a 
about boats, vehicles, and equipment. Boats would be good. Isn't that what I said? Well, equipment is. Vehicles and equipment. Storage shed is not, what did you say you wanted to change that? No, you can say storage shed for the, solely for the purpose of uh, uh, storing. No, we'll just leave it a storage shed. I, I'm okay with that. Okay. So that covers everything. Is that right? Okay. Well, if there's no other discussion, then do you folks have any other issues at all? Talk about the way he mows his lawn. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, if that's it, we're all set, then, uh, Chair, will I entertain a motion to either approve or disapprove? Uh, you want to do it tonight? Okay, I make a motion to approve the request for a variance. included in your motion. Well, I, I thought that's what you wanted to do. Okay. Uh, that, that being the terminology, uh, that, that generally that? covers it too. Um, yeah, I mean, um, moved by Mr. Flesner to approve um, a storage shed approaching 15 feet into the front setback. Approve the variance. Second, anybody say? Awesome. Seconded by George. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, we, we, we do. when was that one issued? Gosh, I, maybe two months ago. Yeah, so, so I, sh I believe I have it. Yeah. Um, but uh, if you don't mind, uh, just if you don't have, have it, it no. okay. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah, yeah, that'll work. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, it should be, uh, I'll, I'll let, I'll, 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 I'm sure I'll, I'll probably ask me tomorrow morning what happened. No, so we can go ahead and we can go ahead and support the shed. All right. Thanks, Jack. Thank you, everybody. It's been delightful. Thank you. Have a great night. Next time, good to see you. On you. <laughs> Take care, guys. Take care. Thanks. Okay. That's great. Uh, then they're an easement holder, and they would be notified as an abutter. Mm. Yeah, easement through there. Yeah. They still haven't paid me for the property that they got their vote on. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we move on. Move on. Everybody set? Need a break? No? Okay. <laughs> Second case this evening, then. You ready? We're ready. Uh, case number 15-13, variance application. Pursuant to zoning article, oh my goodness, it's all blurry. <laughs> <laughs> that would be Roman numeral two, I guess, point three point seven, subparagraph G. 
to allow for an electronic message center signed at 968 Laconia Road in the Resort Commercial District. I didn't want to clear. Where'd you get that? I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Did I get it right? Yeah. Okay. Um, same thing, folks. We've got four members here. What do you want to do? Postpone or go with it? Go ahead and go with it. Yes. Right? Okay. Uh, do I hear any disqualifications then? I should ask that first. It could have been reduced even further. Okay, very good. So we have an application for an electronic sign. Is that you care motors? Yes. And you are? I'm Kathy Champagne from Jutra Signs. Oh, okay. The other one who prepared this? Yes. A lot of information in here. <laughs> Don't worry, signs are easy. <laughs> and you are? I'm Jeff as well. Jeff, okay. I thought you looked familiar. Do you have any additional information that you'd like to, to uh, present uh, aside from what's already here in front of us? I do. Uh, Go ahead, Kathy. And it really uh, concerns the property, the, the actual property. Uh, when I first started working with Jeff, we were working to take a sign that we had in Manchester and we located um, at least the other ship here in Sultan. And when I first looked at this map, it was one of the first times I've seen a property line go right through. Um, yeah. It's not that it made it complicated, but what occurred to me in all of the conversations I've had with Jeff is that he's somewhat bound by both. What one wants often, the other just gets yeah. because of practicality and Issues. You mean so, towns? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Yes. There's, there's a sliver. Oh, I know. Uh, I'm very familiar with it. it that's in Tilton, <laughs> and then the rest is in right. uh, Sanberton. Yeah, we have two. The sign itself is in Tilton. Yes. Okay. Well, this isn't our first rodeo with Jeff, so. <laughs> <laughs> We're aware of the sliver. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the sliver problem. And uh, there's, a, there's a little pictorial in your packet showing. Yeah. The sign, um, the identification panel at the top, yeah. and this is the uh, digital cool. sign that we'd like to put up. Um, it meets <coughs> the requirements in every other way. Uh, yeah, square it's just slightly feet. under 40 square feet and right. mm -hmm. three feet below the maximum height. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, actually, there's a 10 foot minimum, and that again, a little bit unique, but um, yeah. So, so we need we need all the criteria. It's only uh, 12 feet to the top, but it's uh, the, that sliver of land does contain the right spot for this particular sign. And there is a utility pole here, also. What's up with that? You actually talked to me a little yeah, bit about the utility, utility pole. pole. The uh, had us move from the commercial car park. So that was moved. When? I just passed by there this morning. I was still it was moved, I believe, 15 feet over from the driveway. Oh, but is that, is that showing it? She's, she's yes, showing, showing the sign going in right about where that utility pole is. Yeah, I, can I show you a picture? Sure. Okay. What, what we've got, what we've got is the property, the pole, and, the, and the sign. Okay, and Jeff, could you just stop? Make sure I'm marking the right spot. Is it going right there? Yeah, you're right there. Okay, yeah, so I'm gonna the base. Right. So that is going to be where the base of the pole goes. And we've already looked um, and measured, and I actually had our crew go out to make sure because they're the ones putting up the sign, and I want to make sure that the wires and everything around it is safe for them to work. So they've already taken a look and made sure that there's clearance and room there for the sign. It, I know it looks tight in the photo, um, but it's it's the perfect spot. We comply with the setback. The one thing I yeah, it looks like you do. One thing I, I I did have a problem with being familiar with the property, and even by your own map, by your own drawing, uh, 
this would kind of give the impression that the, the sign itself is like 20 feet back from the road. And that's not the case according to the photograph here. Can you take a look? Right here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, okay, we'll use a actually, this, there isn't even a radius like that. No, I know. If you're out there, it doesn't, if you don't see that radius, it goes right straight out there. And the other thing, if that's true, the portion in Tilton at that point up in the lot narrows to, to nothing. That's where it meets the road. So the sign really still is impartially the other property and. Uh, uh, you can't put it in the corner because where the corner comes to a point like that. Let me just find that. At the edge of it. Okay. So, oh, yeah, so here's the. Yeah. Oh, I see. I see what you're saying. Okay. So, yeah, you, is that what you're looking yeah. at? Yes. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, it would appear that yeah. it's further back. Yeah. I mean, it, it it is right there. Um. But how does what's What's the downside to that? The width, well, the downside is the width of the sign is almost eight feet, nine feet. Nine feet. Yeah. So that, that's going to put it well, pretty close to the edge of the, where the phone pole is now. It's getting pretty close to the highway. Yeah. And the other side of it is actually yeah. going into the Samaritan part of the lot. Um, Whereas if you go up to the west end of the lot, which is more the Tilton property, mm -hmm. then you've got room to do this. Well, according to the survey that we did, and we marked the location, the side that you're saying is closest to the road, where the leading edge of the sign is within the setback, is, is outside of the setback, so we meet the criteria for the setback on the road side. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. Okay. But it's hard to believe from this. Yeah, well, please, yeah, please yeah, I'm sure, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. 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 We're off a little bit, if I, if I may. Mm -hmm. We brought the... Uh, Rinse a conduit right here. Comes up right here. And the sign actually sits where it proposed is actually built a little bit here, which sits back further. You know what? When I was there. Fence, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. He had me. Oh, it's all right. He, it's okay. Let the record show he had me put the wrong mark on it. Well, I just, no, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what? And I remember being there with you maybe a month ago when we first talked about this. And uh, you're right, it, it was closer to, the, to that part of the fence. So I guess what I'm saying is we did go out, you, Jeff knows where the bounds are, and we measured because when we install a sign, if we are in the setback or we're over the line, it's a big deal. And sure is. Yeah. we don't want to be moving signs around. We like to install them once. That's just it. The, the town of Tilton property comes to a point right now. It does come to a point. Right. So it, it doesn't look to me like you've got it in Tilton. You look like me, you'll be kind of sandwiched. Um, well, if um, I may, yeah. here, here's the site plan uh, from, uh, I don't know the date, sorry. Um, and this has the, uh, I think, the parcel boundary there. And this is, that sign is the same location, right? Right there. Let's see. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's show it. Right. Yep. Yeah, that's that's it. Okay. This was something you said. I think what. Uh, no, that was the engineer. Are uh, curious about is why you didn't locate the sign at the western end of the yeah. property where there's exactly. all kinds of rope. Is there any reason for that? I mean, without. You know, further down. I mean. A, a sign near the entrance, near the near the entrance where the curb cut is, is always the best spot because people look for the sign. And what happens is, if it's if it's on the other side, people see the sign, they start slowing down because they know that the curb cuts somewhere, and they kind of creep along, and then traffic backs up. It's always safer to have the sign right where you want them to turn. It's just a more natural spot. It's not 100% ideal in terms of that tight fit, but we made sure it was going to fit. Okay. Here's my other, where I'm leading up to this. Whole thing is, it's an issue that I encountered a while back with an electronic sign down the road from me uh, for a car deal, also. Okay, and, uh, uh, it was that theirs is out by the road, too. And uh, this was noticed by two people when I worked here, they brought it to my attention because I. I I didn't drive to encounter this problem, but when you put the road, put, put the sign very close to the road, 
when we get fog, that becomes a blinding situation when that is on at night in the fog. And the person who had uh, encountered this problem, which we all know, but I, I won't bring his name up, but uh, uh, he said at that point in time he was blinded for a couple of seconds because of the, it's like when you have the high density right? lights. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I mean, um, concerned from a safety point of view that putting it that close to the edge of the road, if we encounter fog type night conditions, that this could present a problem to the traffic. I'd like to address that because it's important and it's, guess. it's a feature of these signs that I, I think is critical. It really does set them apart. There's a lot of different brands of electronic signs out there. Sometimes it's hard to tell them apart. They all look pretty much on average, but they're not the same. And one thing that I can tell you about the Watchfire brand is essentially the only brand that we sell because we've never ever experienced problems like this. It will automatically dim at night. A lot of the and ones out there don't. Going. A lot of the ones the only don't. Solution. It's got yep. at night. And if it's manual, it just doesn't seem to happen. But uh, they build these signs for every city, every town in the country. And there are there are stricter towns, there are more lenient, but they, they build them right. And these automatically dim. And if you look at it some night, and Jeff, you and I say, you know what, we want to crank that up or down a little bit, we have control over that. Yeah, that's the individual whom I went down and brought the problem to his attention, who was the owner of that business at that point in time. I asked him to uh, address that as a problem, which he did. He did from his computer there on the phone. But what scared me is the fact that uh, here's a case where it easily could have caused an accident uh, to someone that could. I can see that. Yeah, they are brilliant. Uh, it was, it was, uh, yeah. The ones that I see, and I'll say over half of the ones that I see out and about where I live and work, at night they're too bright. They're too, I, I admit it, even though, you know, I'm part of this industry and I'm here, I'm here representing a certain brand because they are sometimes too bright. Um, and the only thing to do is make sure that they're dimmed and we've even gone to cities and towns where there's criteria that it has automatic dimming. And to, to a certain standard, and Watchfire um, actually sometimes helps cities and towns write the standard so that they know what the right intensity is at night. So that's not going to be a problem if you're going to find this sign. I, I, I hear what you're saying, but unfortunately, this is a type of issue that we have no control over. Once you leave here and the sign goes up, what happens six months from now? Whatever they've said in the office or whatever. But that's one of the we reasons. Can't but that's one of the reasons that I asked Jeff to be here because the things that are talked about and committed to here at this hearing are enforceable. It is it, if we say we're going to do something, then we in fact have to do it. And it does matter how they're programmed. And if you think about some of the electronic signs, and I know you've got one of these, but if you think back to some of the electronic signs, whether it's around here or, or elsewhere that you really don't like looking at. And you compare it to some other electronic signs that are very nice to look at, very reasonable. You'll find the only difference between those signs and you hit it right on the head. It's the way they're programmed. The brand, yeah, it, it matters. You know, it, it, it does to me at least. But to the average person, the brand's really not going to matter. I'm talking about daytime, you know, not the nighttime dimming. Mm -hmm. What you're going to find is the programming that is either offensive or appealing. And that's why I wanted to be here so that we could talk about that and Jeff could explain what kind of programming. It's not going to flash. It's not going to change very quickly. It's just going to be messages that he needs to get that communication out to the public. And you know, and, and again, he's going to be the one programming the sign as he did in Manchester. But from all of our conversations, um, it's not going to be a sign that's going to catch your attention. Because well, it's hard to look at. Can we get back to the the lighting? Sure. Uh, we can do the, uh, the message board. Sure. I want, I want to talk about that too. But I had a question about the lighting. You said it. It's the, this particular brand automatically dims the light at night. Um, my question is: Does it does it adjust for sunset changes in, in the hour? Automatically, or does that have to be done manually? It's got a photo cell. Okay, so it's photoelectrically. Okay, great. 
to just traffic with their high beams on trigger it? No, it wouldn't trigger that. And that would stay because the beams are too they're, then, they're too low. With this photoelectric cell, it would stay until sunrise tri triggered it again. You can you actually have a manual override, and I actually bring my laptop because I have the software loaded, and sometimes it's helpful. So if you want to see it, just let me know. But the way the way these signs are programmed, you have a schedule, and you can schedule messages to whatever hold time that you're looking for, yeah. and you can make sure that the sign is the electronic sign is turned on at a certain hour and it shuts off. No matter what the photo cell tells it, you have an override. So if you want your sign off at 11 o'clock, it goes off at 11 o'clock. Okay. Is that your intention? Turn it off. To turn it, turn it yeah, off? Yeah, to okay. turn it on and off. After a certain time in the evening? It doesn't need to be on at night. I know, because we're yeah. clever, clever, clever with traffic at the night one. Most, most businesses, depending on the, on the type of business they're in and what hours they're open, most do turn it off an hour or two after they close. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, very typical. I live there as well. I, I don't want to ride at midnight. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, let's, no, I know. There these, you go. Yeah. With the proliferation of these things, these electronic signs, we, we could get into a you know, situation where we have light pollution. Definitely. Now, this is a, could be an one, this is a one color sign. Purpose. It's not full color. So it is on the lower end of intensity where it's just. Um, it's one color amber. One color amber. The one color is the, the monochrome comes either red or amber on a black background, right? And this one happens to be amber. Okay. It's a little bit softer than I, I personally think the amber is a little bit softer than the red is. How large will the letters be and how many lines would it be? That is completely um, the way you program it. You could have two larger letters you could have three or more in a row smaller letters it's it's flexible um, and generally what Jeff is going to find this is what I do whenever I set a new one up where sometimes I'll program messages for the customer and you drive by and you look and you, and you say that letter that I did there that's a little too big that other one's a little too small and you kind of stay within a, a certain size that works for the traffic and the distance to the sign I assume this is a two-sided sign. It is. Well, the reason I asked is uh, you've got a good three feet of this of the total sign dedicated to message board. But if you use the whole three feet, you're not going to get a whole lot of letters on that board. You really do have to use smaller letters in order for the length. To be displayed. I mean, I've seen them where the message strip on the sign is, is maybe 10 inches and in the, in the, the letters are like 6 inches and it's one line and it changes periodically. Mm -hmm. and, and that's really plenty visible from the road. Um, one of the so things I, that's why I asked, does it have to be 3 feet wide? Well, again, it, first it's, it's an existing sign that is being relocated. So Jeff already owns it. But the thing about the size of this sign is you're right, there are some signs that are that are built a foot tall. The cabinet's only a foot tall and the letters are six inches and it's long enough to accommodate most messages. But this also has to do with traffic speed and all the rest of it. It might be that the kind of messages Jeff displays, there might be four, five, six inch letters on two lines, just a a message with five, six, seven words at the most and he'll display it for the length of time that you know he feels messages and i'm sure you'll drive it just like other people do to make sure that you know you can read it um but dictating a certain height or a certain amount of letters really it's tough to do that with different kinds of businesses and the kind of messages they want to display you can also you can also do a picture um, and that's very effective and you can display um, the date time and temp on that sign too with or without other messages? Well, the, the sign that I referenced uh, with the one line, six inch letters, was at 45 miles an hour or a little above, um, was easy to read mm -hmm. and interpret. It was, wasn't any issue at all. Uh, and I got to thinking that, you know, if you went beyond that, the two lines or maybe more, there wouldn't be enough time to, to see it. The time, time you come around that curve, that's at 40 miles an hour. 
presumably, <laughs> theoretically, uh, and go past your place, um, is, is anybody realistically going to be able to read multiple lines? Well, multiple message? lines could mean three or four words. It really could. It doesn't have to fill the entire sign. And as for people catching it, I don't think anybody's under the illusion that somebody driving by for the very first time is going to absorb the entire message. This is something that is, you, you need, you need the, re, the repetitiveness where somebody drives by and hold time is very important. You know, you're not going to change it every five or ten seconds because you're right. They're never going to see it. That's even worse. When right. You do that. Exactly. But That's if you have a if you have a minute or two or whatever whatever it takes to hold that message, it really becomes in in a in a way it becomes a, a static sign for that period of time, and then the message simply changes. And what you rely on is that people driving by, they're going to see it, become familiar with it, know the messages absorb the message. So no, we're, we're not trying to make sure everybody sees it the first time around. Um, it's not, it's really not for that. I see. Yeah, I think we have to ask ourselves, uh, the audience is quite specific in all electronic science. Now that seems to be going to an extreme, which I don't particularly agree with that kind of an extreme. Uh, but the intention, of course, was primarily to avoid distraction. And and we hear that a lot. We hear from a lot of concerned cities and towns about distractions. And you you made a, a good point. There are plenty of distractions. I know what distracts me when those crazy people get all up in costume and start, you know, waving things huh. around on the side of the street. That Tax always, time and all that. Yeah, yeah, that always distracts me. And, you know, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, yeah, ultimate, bad. ultimately, the responsibility is mine. If I'm distracted and it's a dangerous situation, <coughs> I need to take care of that. But to say nobody can ever do that again because somebody might be distracted, you know, I'm, I'm responsible for, for driving safely and making sure I do the right thing. And you're right, whether it's texting or, you know, everybody's distracted by something different. But what this is meant to be, like most electronic signs in the area, and I think Tilton does a great job. I think the signs that are here in Tilton are very well programmed. They blend right in. I think they're really well used. And what you really want it to be is something that people can look to if they want to, to get information, current information. Because let's face it, everything is fast now. Nobody. I mean, the paper, it's a day old, that's forever, right? Because everybody goes online and gets instant, instant news. So people are just set up to look at these when they want to get that current information. Which in your case would be um, a particular type of vehicle that's on special, yes. something like that. Or open. <laughs> or what, or open? Open Sunday. I mean, they're open when a lot of car dealers aren't. And I know when I drive by. You don't need what drive sign to say that. Well, actually, there's a lot of ways of communicating that. But the Small Business Administration will say that out of all the forms of media that you can use to advertise, newspaper, radio, TV, internet, whatever it is, direct mail, you're going to pay four to ten times more than you will by using an on-premise digital sign. And not only that, but when people read that message that you're open, they're there. They're right in front of you. Yeah, well, I, I had a business for a number of years. And uh, in all honesty, that's hogwash. Okay, well, what I found is the fact when it comes to signs, people look at them the first time and they never look at them again. They just drive by and they don't pay any attention. But you put in the other forms of the other media, many people look at, not just the people that you drive that drive. I didn't mean to imply that it's an all or nothing thing, that you yeah. only use the sign or you only use other types. Well. It really has to Thanks be a combination, to but I can tell you there are businesses and owners that we've helped where one of them in particular said to me about two years ago, and I'll never forget this, I went in because he wanted to upgrade his electronic sign, and he said, had I not put that sign in when I did, I wouldn't be in business right now. He had that much 
of a draw and he used it and again it's all in the way you use it he used it brilliantly and he said I would not be in business if it wasn't for that sign and that was a very powerful message he didn't just use the sign he did he did other things too I'd have to be from Missouri to, to buy that to be honest with you I'd have to I have to have a business and actually see that type of effect to happen because I find that very difficult to find that that makes that much of a difference in a business because you like I said, number one, signs only good for the people driving by. What goes into the other media, it's anybody who gets the newspaper or listens to the radio or television, thousands of people are getting uh, it's thrust in their face, if you will. But uh, with a sign, electronic or otherwise, only people are driving by. And that comment, that, by the way, that was from that was from one customer, and I I wouldn't I wouldn't say that it wasn't true, but that was one customer, and I'm not saying every single one of them said that. But one did, and I believed him, and it was a powerful message. And I, I thought it was a value to, to bring that to you because it depends what type of business you're in. Also, not every single business is perfect for digital advertising. But in his case, he was a uh, uh, kitchen cabinets and, and uh, custom furniture. It made that much of a difference. He also had a great location and a very high traffic count on his road. And that's key. It does matter where you put that, it. That's, that certainly is true. There's no question mm -hmm. about that. But that, that, that's location. And, and the location that we're talking about for Jeff, it's the it's the right location. Well, everybody knows there's a car dealer there because every time they drive by, they can see that. They're either interested in cars or they're not. But to be fair, if you drive by on a Sunday, there's times, I'm sure, you're not out in the lot. You're in your office. And it would be hard to know for sure that they're open. And for him to say one of the messages that I would want to put out is that we're open Sunday. I assume, Jeff, it's because you get some feedback now and then that people th they didn't know. know you're open. And we hear, we hear that too, where people put things on their sign and they say the first thing that happens during that first couple of weeks is people come in and say, I had no idea. And I, I do listen to that. And I wouldn't be here with the presentation that I have if I didn't hear it if it, if it didn't make that kind of an impact. We'd have a really hard time placing any of these signs if they weren't effective. So. I understand where you're coming from. Of course, you're also biased in your, uh, your presentation and where you want to go with it. I mean, we're, we've, we've dealt with the, the signs, not this recently, but I mean, uh, for all the years I worked in the town, we dealt with the signs and what people thought mm -hmm. they were going to gain out of the sign and what they actually did get out of the sign. Nothing more annoying than people who got their sign permits when I was issuing them. Uh, they put the sign out there and it wouldn't change for six months a year. They just sat out there and occupied space. Mm -hmm. So really, they really didn't need the sign to begin with because it didn't say anything different. You know, I'm not going to argue that when we place these, the owners <coughs> have full control. And mm -hmm. I try to keep in touch. I'll build some messages for them. I'll, I'll visit them and make sure that they're using it because really it is up to them. It's kind of like, um, I think of it as buying a treadmill. How many people buy a treadmill and it becomes a... It's in the basement. Right, exactly. Or you drape clothes or towels over it. It happens. So going out and buying it, that's not the hard part. That's the easy part. Using it effectively and paying attention just like the treadmill, that's the hard part. And everybody's different. There are people who buy treadmills and they become long distance runners because of it because they, they use it. Same thing with these signs. Every owner is different. But I, I'm i not quite sure that that's, that's something that you can really control here, whether somebody buys one and they use it, and they use it in a way that we think is a waste, a waste or not. Well, that's, that's pretty it's much their choice. Yeah, it's it really is. Like the examples yeah. I was giving you, mm -hmm. it's their choice not to use it. And, and I say this all the time, but a lot of times I go to cities and towns and I hear a lot of negative things about electronic and digital signs and I give them the same questions I gave you, which is when you think about signs, electronic signs that you really don't like and then you think about the ones that, you know, seem to fit right in and they're very nice. It's not the signs themselves. It's not the electronic components. It's the way they're programmed and that's important. And that's the other reason I told you I had Jeff here because if we make certain statements or assurances about the way it's going to be programmed, 
then we we expect that that's exactly what's going to happen. And that's why these things are recorded and you can go back. But we don't expect there to be any issue with enforcement because we're just telling you how we intend on using it. And, um, you know, in terms of, you know, kind of a, a win-lose thing, I've been doing this for a long time. And I can tell you, I volunteer in my town on the zoning board. And I know that if you're on a zoning board, you care about the town. And I can tell you from all the months I've been working with Jeff, he does too. And I do business in Tilton, so I care too. I don't think it's a matter of, you know, an adversarial uh, situation. I think it's our job to try to come up with the best solution that's good for the town and good for the owner. And that's what I'm trying to do. Okay, thank you. Well said. Also dated September 15th, again from William Cass, uh, Assistant Commissioner, uh, New Hampshire Department of Transportation. Regarding uh, tax map U1, lot 4 for variance to zoning article, and he's got Mark T. Moore, 968, Colonial Road, so <laughs> that's the way it's written. At any rate, we can we can fill in the blanks there with Article Roman numeral two, uh, period three, period seven, subparagraph G. Uh, what is that, Mark T. Moore? That's of the order. Oh, okay. Yeah, parts of the order, parts of. Okay. And it says, Dear Board members, the New Hampshire Department of Transportation is responding to the abutter notice for the above reference project. The New Hampshire Department of Transportation remains neutral towards the application for the above reference property, provided there is no increase in water runoff flowing into the department's right of way, provided there, are no, there is no alteration or construction within the department's 25 foot from center line of highway right of way and provided that, if necessary, any driveway or excavation permit is obtained from the department, sincerely. William Rollins, PD, Assistant District Engineer. Okay. Um, so, having said that, has, does anyone else have any questions for the Georgia, are you okay? Do you have any, any specific questions? Based on that, what you just said, is it 25 feet from the center line? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. From the center line of highway, yeah. If you, if you look at this, this map here, is this being the edge of the road? Okay. Yeah. And this being the edge of the road. I don't know, does the apron constitute any part of the edge? Back. You, you keep your vehicles back like we had told you when you first came in for a very the line right there. Yeah. Yeah, you've done a good job. We did that on purpose. <laughs> uh, and that's great. How, that line is how far back? I can't remember uh, right offhand what we, uh, um, what we specified. But, so. And can you correct me if I'm wrong? Um, 
we actually, actually Jeff got a permit for this, for, for a 40 square foot sign in that spot, what was it, two, two years ago, yeah. or a year ago? That was all part of the, when we went for the stormwater management system. Yeah, we went with both towns for the, for the, uh, for the parents for the display of automobiles. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We sat in front of this board a couple of times. I remember that. And uh, okay. the, the sign being there was permitted in how the plane came out there and, and viewed it and saw it, made sure we were in the right spot. Um, the people we had working on the project at that time. And uh, I think that's the point we're getting at. I don't mean to be disrespectful in any manner. It was a, it was approved there. I might have been off a little bit because I was a little nervous when she told me, where is it? And I apologize for that. I don't yeah, do that. You have prior approval for a sign in that Correct. location? Yep. And he had the property surveyed and worked with an engineer to make sure that all of the boundaries and lines were correct. Oh, okay. It fit there because of the, because of we relocated the pole, we made it a commercial curb cut, it wasn't. We put in the stormwater management system where the gas line was, that, that worked for the whole town. As far as the approval is, I believe. I don't, I don't need to be speaking out of turn. I, I don't think what we're here for where the sign's going to be. I think we're here for yeah, absolutely. The fact that we really want to yeah. display the fact that we're open. I've got a small piece of property, and I know that was by choice, or we have, but we'd like to be able to say, you know, hey, we have this vehicle here for two thousand nine hundred ninety-five dollars. Yeah, we may be sitting out back and you can't see it, but it's up here. It's available. And that's really what we're trying and to that's, do. And that's what we should be getting back in addressing that issue. Well, right? and that's, I know he so spent glad a lot of time. That. We, well, I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, no, and that's why I wanted to bring it up, because I know he spent a lot of time and effort doing it right. And i got to tell you, some owners say, yeah, my property line's around there. Jeff, not even close. He's very, very concise and precise. So I just wanted to make sure you knew that. I wish you had that. said that earlier. Yeah, it makes I'm it a lot simpler. Sorry. Sorry. You're right. It really, we're just dealing with the electronic factor then and not the location. Of the sign, I really, sorry. Where, where did this come from? That, that, in fact, I think is a 2012 site plan, and you can see there they got approval from the planning board to locate the site in that, in that space yeah. as well. Yeah. Hmm. It, it certainly, I mean, it would, I wouldn't say the board would you'd be out of your, I mean, it may be that a, a, a non electronic sign was fine there. But uh, the electronic side is not fine there. Um, I would say that just because the non-electronic side was approved there at one point, that automatically. I don't. I don't know that that's true. Okay. I think the engineer did. He might not have shown it, like at an elevation. But I remember seeing on the site plan that yeah. it was part, part electronic or digital. I do remember that. And I don't think uh, visibility would would be any different. Okay. Where that came to light, though, that's, that's simplified, I think, a lot. So then really all we're really faced with is simply the, the electronic and the fact that the ordinance says electronics well, are yeah, yeah, We should also talk about how often or what's the fastest you have some yes. change. Because that, that, I think, is... Standard that we've been, standard that we've been following pretty much with one minute minimum. Yeah. There was approval granted in May, I think, May, June, the June meeting, where you approved it with a one minute point. That's what I'm looking at. I mean, primarily, I remember at the beginning of this whole thing, <coughs> I wanted to avoid this moving pictorial that some of the signs were getting like, um, like the, the big one on the, on the uh, Tilt, tilt, tilt forward. Yeah, that tanger too is that little one they have up in the roof. They're moving? It, it's got that, it, you can change the sign. It could be moving, but, but they don't. They don't, okay. No, that's what I'm saying. That had a, I believe that was also a minute. Oh, maybe it was three minutes. Because I've driven by that a couple of times in the past few days, and it's always static. And yeah. I know yes. it does change, yeah. but it does not, change, not but, when they, I'm but not, yeah, but I think the, when the approval of that, if I remember back then, that was by the planning board, is that the variance? So getting back to the, uh, the electronic, was one the yeah. getting back to this thing, if we can, uh, 
the, we've talked about illumination at night. Uh, we've talked about the, um, the rotation of the, of the message and the animation and all that. I'm still, I still want to know if three feet by nine is, is excessive for a message. Well, my, there, there's no restrictions as far as the dimension each way, no. it's 40 square feet of the requirement. Absolutely. So why should that have a bearing? Well, well the electronic portion is smaller. What kind of sign it would be? If it was too busy. The message was too busy. That's what I was how, how, would, how would we ever have any control over our business? Let's put a message on the sign electronically. Yeah, the electronic sign is it's, it's three feet, basically. You guys are okay with that? Ten feet. There's nothing okay. to say that the sign has to be filled up, and really, mm -hmm. for good legibility and good oh, visibility, you yeah. shouldn't. I know. So this is where the owners have to be. You know, nothing that specifies yeah. how that 40 feet gets laid out either. I mean, if we could have right. a one foot by 40, for that matter. That's a good point. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, that's try, I don't know where you're going with this. Uh, uh, trying to talk about that aspect of it because we don't have any control over that. If he makes it too busy on the sign. Well, I thought I pointed that out earlier when I was addressing the 10 inch, uh, 6 inch letters, one strip that uh, we have now on Route 3 right now at, at one of the businesses. That's it. Um, and so, you know, uh, to, to go three feet. My, my question was, is, is the sign going to be filled up with too much, too many lines, too many letters, too many words to, to read? Is it going to be too busy to, to even be worthwhile? But if no one else sees that, then I'm fine. Well, I just don't see, you know, what he puts on the sign electronically. No, we don't. He makes it too We busy. don't have any control over what he puts on the sign. Right. It's, a, well, it's how much room, it's how much room he's allowed. For a message, but if you have a static sign, nothing ever changed. You could have that same distance. Yeah. And fill it up. Well, it's you're right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. yeah. So I don't, I don't see that. And I'll tell you, the software is very flexible where you can move things around and adjust even the spacing between the letters so that it is very legible. Mm -hmm. You have complete control. Yeah. Well, it's, well, it's that's going to be. That's going to be his advantage or disadvantage to do it right. Get it Absolutely, right. and the and the better programming he does, and the more legible it is, the more effective the sign is going to be. So it really. I is, agree. Yeah. Has everyone had a, had an opportunity to digest uh, the five criteria for the chief of uh, champagne is laid out on this? I'm sorry. What was your name? Kathy. Kathy. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Uh, yeah, it wasn't any doubt in my mind that this was drafted by someone with CBA experience or Lego experience, one or the other. <laughs> well, when I go to other cases, but I, I, really, I, I really don't want to sit here and read it into the record verbally. <laughs> it would take me all night. Sorry. That's why I asked if, if you folks have had a chance to. That's okay. No, you. Did you have a Do we have public? Sure. We have public input. Uh, Mr. Jessman, oh, is oh, yeah. Mike, yes, would you like to comment? Mr. Yes, as a matter of fact, I would. <laughs> um, I grew up in this area and I bemoan what's become of Exit 20. Um, oh, yeah. That said, I find the electronic signs. Uh, that cat's out of the bag already, okay? It is. Um, I find the electronic signs distracting. And it's not so much the sign in and of itself. There's a big one up at the country club. I go by it all the time up here in Lockmere. Yep. Um, it seems to, to sometimes uh, it's almost going, you know, changing. The message comes up, it's here 15 seconds and it changes. That's, yeah. And I find, that, I find that distracting, especially at night. Cars coming the other way, heaven forbid it's raining. Um, but that's a dark stretch of right. Um, We're concerned about it too. When did that get approved? Right? Yeah, I'm, I'm is it? Um, um, it's right in front of the lock here. Right in front of the, uh, down at the bottom of the hill. There, there was the, it's 
the restaurant. That's, that's, that's the, the kind, kind we don't need. Yeah. It's a pretty big sign, and it's got two yeah. or three lines on it, two at least. Yeah. I mean, I, I wasn't, if I had a comment on the way. If I, yeah, it rotates pretty, pretty It rapidly. rotates quickly, and I find that these things rotate pretty quickly. I thought that they're in the ordinance was something that I think put that a, def a definition on the time. That it, it, it was like three minutes or something like that before they, so that they, you couldn't have animation that kind of thing. Yeah, um, and I might, it might be two minutes, it might be more, but it seems like that that was in there. I didn't think that something in the ordinance was specified. I, I haven't seen anything. Be, I, thought be, I haven't seen anything on the interval. Well, we can do that. Uh, I, I think what, yes. that one was grandfathered anyway, just like Camelot. Those were. Camelot runs the real. That's, that's an example of the, yeah, the well, high intensity lights blinding. Yeah. Although yeah. that was not the one I was making reference to before. There's yeah. also a feature, and I, and I want to address it because it's something that I notice with science too. When signs change just from one message to the other, even if the whole time is a minute or two, it seems very harsh. And what I what I do, and again, it's the reason I brought the laptop if anyone wants to see it, there's a feature called fading. So one message fades out, and another message fades in. And it's just a softer, more comfortable way of changing messages. You don't get that you know, flash, I guess, or that brightness when a message goes from message to the dark screen to the message it just it just fades slowly in and out and it's more comfortable and that's again all in the programming it's all in the software I could even show you like a little demo I have messages all set up how it fades in and out and it's a little bit more comfortable than you know having it just change on and off mm -hmm. and that is one of the issues. a question for you how many times a day do you feel that you must be changing the sign we would like to put a special today on Sundays. We'd like to simply have open. Not that I'm looking for any restriction on that, but I'm, you're asking me something to tell That's you good. what I'm feeling. Um, I'd like to have a special on there. Who's a little special today? I'd like to have open on Sunday. Uh, and any other, you know, point we want to get there. I guess you know, Kathy can probably tell me some more. Well, ideas I, you're what, probably going to want to put time and temp up there now yeah. and then if there's a holiday message, a long weekend, drive safely, all kinds of, you know messages but again you know having having the sign on all day it's a, it's changing it even once a minute you know you there's a lot of time in there to fill up so there's a lot of content maybe if it's not even specifically related to a special or being open Sundays there's information that keeps people interested in your sign and daytime attempt is one of them for your hours Oh, did you have any other comments? Uh, yeah, I thought of number two, the spirit of the uh, ordinance. Oh, number two, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I the ordinance, the spirit of the ordinance being somewhat different than what, what's listed here. And it is, uh, as far as the, the business appearing to be outdated or not keeping up with current technology, I think the spirit of the, the ordinance was to keep us, I don't know, quaint. Again, I guess the cat's out of the bag there, too. Yeah. Um, but th that yeah. seemed like it was the spirit of the ordinance. We're a town of 3,500 people, 3,600 people that's become this. And we kind of, live, a lot of the old time people who really lived here and, and have raised their families here and what it, kind of liked what it was. Um, that's why the ordinance is in there, to preclude that kind of gaudy, flashy, you know, Las Vegas type stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's my reading of the ordinance. I, I, For whatever that's worth to you. Well, what, that, what you just described there is very important. That's, yes. that's definitely what we don't want to I happen. can't be the only guy that feels like that, you know, resident taxpayer yeah. or whatnot. You're the, not. The thing we have to consider, right. too, is the fact that uh, as you said, the cat's already out of the bag. There are electronic signs in town. Okay, therefore, uh, we can't just blatantly say you can't have electronic signs now. Because the court just turned that around. And well, I know. I understand that the realistic uh, aspects of this. We got to do. Yeah, one has to be. Well, what we can do is try to get it as safe as possible. For a compromise and, and create the minimum variance that we that we can. It's acceptable to everybody. And when it came to that question, I actually didn't 
I didn't look at it from that point of view, but I can see where that's a consideration. The way I took it was changeable copy signs, manual changeable copy signs, like like this right here. True enough. I mean, this has been around, you know, these are- Gas station too right, all the time. These have been around a long time, yes, and there's no restriction on these whatsoever. So when I read that question about the spirit of the ordinance, I thought, well, okay, if the spirit of the ordinance is that you're allowed to have changeable signs, and electronic signs, yes, they've been around for a while, but not as long as the manual ones. Right. I looked at it as, well, if they allow changeable and technology has progressed, because let's face it, this is what we all used to use, right? This is what yeah. I used to use. Yeah. And um, things have changed. <laughs> you don't see typewriters anymore. This is what you see. So the spirit of the ordinance for me was, if you allow changeable signs, then the spirit is changeable and not necessarily how you change it. Because it's just hard to change that message and you've got to send it somebody out there with one of those big sticks and all the letters and everything. So that's how that's how I interpreted that. I understand that okay. interpretation. I just didn't agree with all of it. And I understand it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I, I understand where you're coming from, Joe. Yeah. We all do. We, uh, and it is sometimes it was troubling back when the signs first started coming in, uh, how they chose to use them. Mm -hmm. That they were quite distracting and annoying to say the least. And we've then, become what we've become. And then it went to the Supreme Court. Yeah. And, uh, and then they put the kibosh on a lot of that stuff. A man's got a right to promote his business. I agree with that too, otherwise it wouldn't be it. Excellent point, sir. So I think, to bring it back to the board here, well, we're essentially been looking at it. Uh, they want to have signage that's controlled electronically. Yep. And uh, that's really what we're, what we're going on. And, uh, so I think the best way to address it is if we're going to uh, even consider approving it, it would be to control it uh, with conditions as to how it will be operated. Isn't that seem logical? Absolutely. That's what we, that's all we can do at this point, just like we've done in the past. Well, I was looking at the uh, the conditions from the June uh, meeting that Kathy referenced, and those those two conditions regarding the intensity, no animation, and intervals appear to be appropriate. In this case as well, it, with the addition possibly of fade in and fade out that you referred to. Because I agree with you entirely, that's a nicer, much nicer way to see a sign. I've seen that before, and it's a lot gentler on this. I mean, when, they, when it suddenly flashes on you, you just happen to be at the right location. You wonder, what was that? You know, what just well, happened? And it also automatically takes your mind off of. Yeah, you're driving. That could be distracting. Yeah. I think the that'd be somebody flashing a light on the side right. where you would do the same thing. So would you would you entertain uh, the, the possibility of that being a, an additional condition on this? Yeah, is that a problem for you? It's, it's not a problem whatsoever. It sounds like the concern here, if I may just one thing I would comment on that before, is sure. that some signs have been approved and some people have abused them. And if you look back at our track record with this town in the town of Samberton, Everything we've been asked to do on that property, I think we've gone above and beyond it. We've done it. So I think you got to kind of look at track earlier. Record. I mean, you could have easily violated the setback on your vehicle side that front, which I almost fully expected someone that, that might have. You know, we've seen that before with other dealerships that just crowd push right out to the edge of the road. But you didn't do that. But well, we drew the line. <laughs> you, yeah, you, the line. <laughs> and you complied with the variance that you got. And, uh, so that's uh, pretty, pretty good. Thank you. I go by there all the time. Impressed the way you run this. Thank you. You haven't got a tremendous amount of space to work with. No. Uh, it's tough. I don't know how you do it, but you do. <laughs> it works. You make it work. So, uh, if there's no other uh, feedback from Mr. Jessman at this time, the folks are okay. Uh, how about the board members? Anything, any other discussion? 
I just want to bring something else before. Oh, sure. We just, before and we just run off with a, a variance here. Uh, I was looking under the, the master signage plan, and it says where a master signage plan is included in the approval of the development. Pursuant to the Thomas Hill Site Plan Review Regulation, any subsequent proposed change in the design of signs or any subsequent proposed increase in the number or size of signs shall be subject to review and approval in the same manner as the original master signage plan. Uh, that would almost indicate that they got to go back to the planning board. Yeah, it would. Yeah, well, it's Subsequent proposed change in the design of signs. Oh, the subsequent approved, subsequent proposed increase in the number, which is not an issue. Yeah. Or size. Or we size. Okay. Uh, it would be, if anything, in the design of signs. Design of signs. Would fall into that. Okay. Now the other thing is on 3. <clears throat> Commercial districts proposing structures in the setback areas are subject to site plan approval and off uh, to site plan subject to site plan approval. Uh, well, you already got that. You already got that. So that tells me will be the 2.3.5. That is, if we, want, if we want to consider that as an issue or that they have to go play with the planning board. What do you think? Yeah, uh, sorry, yeah, whispering in the background. Um, I just uh, wonder. Um, it's it's common since since site plan review has already been conducted and approved on this case. The addition of this particular sign, um, the location, the fact that it may be in the setback. That I feel that was already approved at the site plan review hearing. You know, maybe there's a slight change here, but I think the dimensions are the same. I wonder, I'm just wondering, um, not knowing the answer right off, um, whether that condition, that uh, section or that element of the zoning ordinance could be satisfied by directing um, the applicant to obtain a sign permit. I don't know if you, if, if, um, if that would satisfy it. <clears throat> Did the original state that it couldn't be a, in other words, the original sign that was approved, mm -hmm. is the only difference the fact that we didn't address the electric part of that sign? In other words, in the original approval, was there any mention of the sign itself? Uh, we have that paperwork in front of us. So yeah, well, I think that would plan. make a difference. Yeah. This is a kind of a fuzzy copy of the engineer's submittal, and it does say proposed, sorry, a 40 square foot commercial sign, and it does talk about it's illuminated. Uh, because it says, you know, we'll have a photo cell, which is fine, mm -hmm. but it, it describes it as a proposed commercial sign total 40 square feet. Yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, so that was not, the answer that question. Change, well, yeah, but I don't think that changes the master plan if that's what was in there. That's false. Like that? You would, you would lean in the fact that they don't have to? Yeah, because okay, so I'm not sure that it's a it's a significant. This is this is if you're changing the. That's the way I read it anyway. For, that's going from a rectangle to types. So yeah, or or uh, different. Yeah, the, or different location of the sign, or a different something. You know, 
Well, well, we're we're right. addressing the fact of the electronic part of it by this. So we're not changing the original sign was approved at that size. It was all that. All we're giving a variance for is the, the use of an electronic sign. Right. And yeah. it's shown with so the center support. Think, so I, that's why I'm saying I don't think so that it's going to be changed to a master plan. We're just giving a variance. Yeah. Okay. Just so I bring it up so that they're aware of it's there. If, uh, if theoretically, I guess the planning board could send you a letter saying that we feel that you need to address it further, but it would be within. I'm just, I'm just saying this to make you aware of what's in there, how they want to read that. I agree with you. I mean, you, you could have plug out one of those yellow changeable signs and have a light bulb inside of it uh, from the very beginning. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Stand there and turn the switch on and off all night. <laughs> okay, well, that, that's my save. I'll give you that. I, just, uh, I knew that was in there and I wanted to uh, bring that to light. Is there anything else, George? You okay? All right. Uh, if there's no other comments, and I'll close the uh, I'll close the meeting to the public center and go back to the board again. If there's no other discussions, then we can go ahead and entertain a motion. Whichever way you want to go. Repeat it again. Seems like it. I, I, I don't think further conversation, really. I think whatever we do, we, we make the uh, conditions the, uh, the heart of the whole thing and uh, go that direction. What do you think? And the kind of conditions that you have here and what are in here, I think it's kind of. Uh, what would be looking for? Did you, did you see this? Yeah. Okay. I did modify that one uh, on the one in one minute intervals just in case you guys go ahead and go with it. Uh, it added uh, the words with fade in, fade out feature. Yeah. Okay. And you could make a new animation. Well, that's not really an issue here. Uh, and that's prohibited in, in the zoning ordinance anyway, so it's not really... Is the sign even capable of animation? It is. Oh, it would be there, then you'd have to put it in yeah, I suppose, yeah. It, it, it can, but here again, the ordinance already specifies no animation, so that would have to be a separate issue, wouldn't it? Yeah, I don't know. I think this is going to yeah, spell that Yeah, that's a... It looks like... That's taken care of. It is. 3.7. Yeah, it's already specified in there. So that, I don't know if you want to look at a change or change. So that was, the only, that was yeah. the only modification I right just right now. I think it's cute. Not cute. Mm -hmm. sure. it's cute. Yeah. All right, there's no other discussion. And everybody's happy? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. 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 But that's right, uh, so that none of that can be done. Okay, I guess. You're right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they. Can't let you. I can't do it. <laughs> uh, I believe that uh, we approve the uh, variance as we requested with the following. Yeah, the conditions or he's got it written down. Oh, yeah. Okay. Move with the conditions as written. Well, I, I did modify this one. We took out the, the with no animation yeah. business, and after one minute intervals, I added the fade in, fade, fade out, out feature. feature. Yeah. Do you need me? To, do you need us to read that? Um, no, that's okay. Got it. Unless um, and the intensity uh, illumination. 
Yeah, we'll, we'll be reduced between dusk and dawn. That's not a problem either. But uh, that can be in there. It's the same way, same wording. It's fine. You agree with that? Okay. Anything else? So we have a motion then to approve with those conditions? Okay. Oh, do I hear a second? I'll second. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. Uh, no other discussion then? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Taking care of it. Thank you very much, Thank everybody, for your input. Uh, good job. Thank you. Thank you very much. So you'll be all set. Thank you. Yeah. Good luck, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> You know, you can put your blinker on and stop in sometime, too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need a vehicle. <laughs> Trade it in. But I, uh, I noticed when you left that property and you didn't move the town boundary marker. Yeah, that was important. I, I, it's very important. And I was on the perambulator for the town. And I, every day I drove by it. Like, nope, still in the same place. <laughs> well, you know what it was because nobody else did at that time. That was a surprise to us. Oh, I don't want to say nobody else did. But well, you saw the, the T and the S on it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's the official part. Thank you. Yeah. Personally, I don't know if we could have just given that little chunk yeah, of the Yeah, they're fine looking vehicles. Yeah. Yeah. Get out of the way. We've tried hard over the last yeah. six years. Yeah. yeah. All good looking stuff. They yeah. needed a truck at them. Mm -hmm. It's like rewriting the Constitution to give another town a piece of property. I can't even imagine. It's, it's, it was mind boggling when I found out over the yeah. Yeah, Even right. though it was such a, it would be such a simple thing, you know, why it ever got done that way is, it's, uh, Every it, town has one of those. It did complicate construction a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> we got it yeah, I can imagine. Well, three years worth of a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thanks. Have Thank a you. good night. Good luck out there. Thank you. So you do all the pre well, I did the last pre-ambulation yeah. and it's due yeah. again, yeah. so I'll be doing it part of the this winter, just the fall, when the ground freezes. It's well, easier yeah. going through uh, the marshes yeah. than there are some near Franklin. Can you answer yeah. what? Yeah. I often That's wonder was when I saw the, the morning that they had at the top of the auto drive. How did, that, the how did that happen? Through, I think one of our mm -hmm. conditions was... I don't know how it came down. It went yeah. back up because yeah. Yeah. Karen yeah. Ober yeah. and Johnny Van Tassel and Dennis Allen and I went and straightened it up. And the same way on School Street, on Roger Abbott's property, on the right-hand side as you're coming down from Samerton, there's a, a by six-foot granite post. You yeah. can see four and a half feet of it. Right, yeah. And yeah. That, that's where it goes across. It goes right across the road. And, There was supposed well, to be. you want to go there. with me this fall? I'm going. <laughs> Are you just going this fall? I am. You don't have to do it every seven years. Uh, five years. Five years? Yeah, it's five years. It's the one thing prescribed by law that a selectman can be fined for. It's not doing it. Not doing it. <laughs> and yet, uh, lots of people don't do it. Oh, they, can oh, you imagine they, walking they, around some of those places up in Colebrook? Yeah. Old Brook is like as big as Rhode Island or something, you know? <laughs> yeah, there's not an easy way to walk either. <laughs> You'd have to take enough gear and camping gear and food with you for... Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. like walking the Appalachian Trail. trail. Of Georgia. Know, like, only with no trail. No trail. <laughs> no trail, yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay, I... Uh, All right, we have minutes, minutes to address from the uh, previous meeting. And uh, I think that was uh, June, sometime June? in June. No, July. Oh, July. August. July. August. 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 Right. <laughs> oh, jeez. Summer's done. It's oh, it's sad. <laughs> it flew by. Yeah. It was August because I was back for that one. <laughs> yeah, that would come before September. Yeah, it would. <laughs> yeah, they are. It was August 18th. Yeah. You were all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> August 18th. <laughs> And I looked them over. I didn't see any issues. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see one by me. Yeah. It's kind of long and drawn out. <laughs> you think so? <laughs>
<laughs> Where do you see tonight? <laughs> Where do you see tonight? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like my flight manual. It's the best thing. <laughs> 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 the Reader's Digest contains the book. Thank you. I make a motion to approve us. Second. Second. Thank you, Joe. Seconded by Marina. Uh, all in favor then? Aye. 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 Okay. Ten minutes are taken care of. Yeah, would you like to stick around or you want to adjourn? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a tough one. Mm. I think yeah, I'd like to hang around with you. Hang around till nine. <laughs> <laughs> that's adjourned. <a jerk. laughs> uh, all in favor of adjourning then? Aye. 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 Good. Good to see you, Joe. Nice to be seen, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we, uh, we enjoyed your hamburgers out there. Uh, did you? Yes. Yeah. Good. So busy writing it down, I wasn't paying attention to what I was writing. <laughs> <laughs>